What's up guys, Andy Drifter here. I hope your day is going well. I got some slabs back from PSA, so I'm going to share the results with you now. Starting off with this 2022 Topps Holiday Countdown of Mike Trout. Nothing special about this card. I just thought it would look very nice in a PSA slab. It came back as a 9. It looks like he's on his way to another 30 plus home run season as well as another top 10 MVP finish. And the Angels, for the first time in a long time, are relevant. They are in the playoff mix right now. They occupy that third wildcard spot. Of course, Mike Trout, a big reason why. But the main reason why is this next man right here, Shohei Otani, a.k.a. the Unicorn. This is a 2022 Bowman's Best Refractor, and it came back as a 10. It's an absolute shame that baseball does not receive the same coverage as football and basketball because what this guy is doing is not just historic. It's absolutely insane from the mound and from the plate. If the season ended today, he would be the unanimous MVP. Keep in mind, while there are many players, I shouldn't say many, but there are several players who got two or more MVPs, no player has ever won two unanimous MVPs. He's also going to be a factor come Cy Young voting I don't know what the extent is of Shane McClanahan's injury. I would say that he had the edge over the field. He was the front runner for AL Cy Young. But uh, if he is out for an extended period of time, Shohei could be the front runner in that race as well. Switching over to Pokemon 2016, Flareon. I was lucky enough to pull this out of a pack. I submitted it, and it came back as a 10. That puts the value of this card at around $300. And the final slab that I got back from PSA is this Darth Vader Blue Star Field variant. And it also came back as a 10. I bought this card raw. You may have heard me mention before on my channel that I have never ever seen a Star Wars movie. That still rings true today. However, I know they're very popular amongst collectors. There are a lot of Star Wars fanatics. I was lucky enough to get this card raw. Submit it. Came back perfect. Before I sign off, allow me to share some of the latest cards that I've added to my collection. Starting off with this beauty on-card auto of Andrew Jones. It's numbered 5 out of 6. It's from 2020 Topps Archive Signature Series. In December, Andrew Jones will be making his 7th appearance on the Hall of Fame ballot. Last year, he got 58.1% of the votes. You need 75 to get in. So it is most likely that he will either get in this year or next. A well-decorated career that includes five all-star appearances, 434 home runs, and 10 gold gloves. 10 consecutive gold gloves at that. One of the best center fielders of all time. The only thing that's really holding him back for Hall of Fame entry is how he ended his career. His first 12 seasons were with Atlanta. A lot of great stats. A lot of highlight reel plays in the outfield, but the next five years were plagued with injuries, bouncing around from team to team, showing up to spring training out of shape, and two of those years failing to hit above the Mendoza line. That being said, the standard has been lowered for Hall of Fame entry over the past few years, so he should get in, like I said, either this year or next. Next up is another on-card auto of Jose Canseco, and this is from his time with the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. He signed there in 1999. That was supposed to be the last stop of his career. And in his contract, there was a provision where they gave him X amount of dollars, but he had to agree to go into the Hall of Fame, if he was to go into the Hall of Fame, as a Ray. His time with Tampa was short-lived, it lasted just under two years, and of course, he never made the Hall of Fame. Still finished his career with 462 home runs and one of the most entertaining power hitters of all time. Next up, Jeremy De La Rosa, who is currently playing high A ball in Wilmington, batting just over 250 with an OPS over 700. He is the seventh ranked prospect in the Nationals pipeline. A lot of talent, a lot of hype. But not doing much at the moment. But of course that could always change. And last but not least is this beautiful Jake the Snake Auto. One of my favorite wrestlers as a kid. Considered an all-time great in the squared circle. If you get a chance, go on over to Vlad TV where he recently did an in-depth interview 
about his career, his life. I learned a lot of things. I didn't realize he had such a dark past, but he has had a career resurgence. He's been doing a lot of one-man shows at comedy clubs, doing a lot of meet and greets. He still has a loyal fan base, and rightfully so. I may have talked about this card once before on my channel. If I did, I believe it's worthy of an encore. 2022 Topps Pro Debut Orange Lava Refractor of Ellie De La Cruz. It is numbered out of 25. Of course, he is all the rage right now in the big leagues. The Reds, they have been on fire ever since his arrival. And he's already made history. He's become the first player ever in his first 15 games to log 20 hits, three home runs, and five stolen bases. He also has hit for the cycle. Now, I do realize that at the moment, Corbin Carroll has an edge over the field in terms of NL Rookie of the Year voting. But I do believe that De La Cruz will be hot on his heels and give him a run for the money. And the Reds, for the first time in a long time, have been relevant and they are in the playoff picture as we head into the All-Star break. So, that is it for this video. I want to thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and enjoy the rest of your day.